There are two flowing epoxies under Touchstone, the Touchstone Edge System and the Express Flowing Epoxy. Both epoxies have a consistency of syrup and are generally used for laminating or rotting countertops. The Touchstone Edge System, also known as TES, has evolved to offer a solution to fabrication shops that have been required to handle more granite production. Shops handling more granite have found traditional laminating adhesives had high rates of failure during transport and after placement at the customer. The four reasons fabricators cite for changing to TES are a two-hour cure time at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, clear, easy to tint product, the dispenser system eliminates measuring problems, and TES excels in hot and humid environments while others are moisture sensitive and tend to fail under intense machining and profiling. In general, most shops familiar with the use of polyesters for marble fabrication will find the use of epoxies for granite, marble, or limestone is a very easily adaptable process. Usually, the only process modification needed is precise two-to-one measuring and thorough mixing. While the properties for TES are stated at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, TES can be used in temperatures from 55 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, regardless of cure temperature, the final properties will still be the same. However, there will be a difference in the speed of cure and pot life throughout this temperature range. Pot life is the allowable time after mixing the product that the mixed mass can sit in the mixing container before it begins to react and harden. The temperature which determines the speed of cure of TES is the air temperature and the temperature of the stone. In general, every 15 degrees Fahrenheit decrease in temperature below 70 degrees doubles the time needed to cure. It will also double the pot life. If the air temperature falls to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the reaction almost stops, so the stone needs to be above this temperature to use the TES. The product will also become thicker and more difficult to dispense as the temperature drops. There are two ways to get around the effects of lower temperature. Heat the stone, or use the easy mix dispenser with heater. In contrast, every 15 degrees Fahrenheit increase in temperature above 70 degrees cuts the time of cure in half. The challenge at high temperatures is mixing and applying the product before it reacts and begins to harden. Possible ways to use the product in high temperatures includes refrigerating the TES for a short period of time. This lengthens pot life, but the cure is still very fast, so you get the best of both worlds. Or you can mix smaller amounts of the TES, or try pre-coloring the A side to lessen time needed for tinting. Measuring the product is easy because of the use of an Easy Mix dispenser system. Easy Mix measures two parts A epoxy resin to one part B hardener, one half ounce per pump. Three fluid ounces or 90 milliliters of material will offer the following coverage. If your joint thickness is 1 64th of an inch, you can get 350 square inches of coverage. At 1 32nd of an inch, your coverage is about 175 square inches and at 1 16th it's 85 square inches. The most common mix container is an unwaxed paper cup. Surprisingly, the mixing implement of choice is a cut-off tongue depressor or popsicle stick. Cutting off the end to a flat edge allows you to scrape the sides, bottom, and corners for a more complete mix. The most common error when first using the TES is incomplete mixing. Epoxies require more thorough mixing than polyesters, so if you've only used the polyester technique, you're going to need to spend more time and thoroughly understand the mix requirements to get the results you expect. When using the Easy Mix dispenser with the flowing epoxy, simply pour the epoxy and hardener into their marked containers. Prime the pump by pumping out several ounces of material and discarding. Once primed, you pump out the material needed for each application. And if you're just using the clear resin itself, you can pump it into one cup and mix thoroughly for 30 to 40 seconds. If you're not using the dispenser, you can use the Touchstone measured mix cups and fill to the prescribed levels of resin and hardener. Now once you're done mixing, pour out the epoxy on your stone surface, spread it out to a thin film, and then clamp your stone together. In high temperatures, you'll need to spread out the mixed epoxy as fast as possible before it sets up in the cup. Coloring TES is easy because of its nearly clear components. But stay away from water or glycol-based colorants for maximum strength. Water-based colorants may produce a foaming effect while also changing the cured properties of the epoxy. Once cured, TES is not affected by water. Just be careful not to exceed 5% by weight of colorant addition. Thin, fluid touchstone colorants are available for use in the system. 
These colorants mix in a lot easier than thick paste, and it's easier to add very small amounts of colorant for translucent effects. The stone to be bonded must be clean, dust-free, dry, and sound. Wash off any wet saw ponds before they dry. Often, oil-free compressed air is blown over the dry stone to remove the dust and mask any areas that you do not wish to be exposed to TES. Dispensers are best kept away from water and dust. Fill to a level such that you can use all the material within a one-month period. In very humid environments, this time period may need to be shortened. Keep the lids on the dispensers and keep the metal cans that hold additional product tightly closed. In original unopened cans, TES has a shelf life of two years. The dispensers are best used at and above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Below this temperature, the standard TES product becomes too thick and heat must be applied to lower the viscosity, either by applying heat or using the heater on the Easy Mix dispenser. That's all there is to know. Now you're an expert on the use of the Touchstone Edge system for perfect lamination. The Express Flowing Part A may be tinted with Touchstone polyester colorants before Part B is added. Pour Part A flowing into a mix cup and then pour Part B hardener, which is about one half the volume amount of Part A, into another cup. Combine the two parts and mix thoroughly for 30 seconds. Then use a flat stick to spread the epoxy over your bonding area. Clamp tight and let the epoxy set up. Remember to use duct tape on your clamps. If the epoxy drips onto your clamps or surrounding stone, it will be difficult to remove without damaging your stone.